Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you from Mossy Creek Fly Fishing with your fly fishing forecast. The date for today is Monday, the 22nd of April. So here we are in the peak of spring. We've got so many bugs to talk about. Uh, you almost can't go wrong if you're up in the mountains right now. Our water levels are ideal. So let's, let's jump right into the brook trout fishing to get started um, and talk about some of these insects. So we started off with our quills. Um, and we that those hatches are pretty good. Quill cool Gordons, uh, red quills, blue duns. Now we've made our way into much bigger mayflies. So we're starting to see uh, we have Cahills, we have Hendrickson's, we have our big March Browns coming off. Um, we're finding those to our west in Alleghenies as well as in the Blue Ridge. So those are your nice big size 10 March Browns. Um, fish go bonkers over them. First, really a big consistent meal. Uh, in months and months for these these little rookies. So they're gonna be jumping out of the creek pretty much all day for them uh, Those have been hatching really well uh, Sulfurs uh, left to a lesser degree up in the mountains, but certainly we'll, we'll get to those down here uh, on the valley floor and our spring creeks caddis are popping like crazy um, you, you really kind of can't go wrong up in the mountains when you're picking your your uh, dry fly and uh, also remember uh, attractors work great so um, once the fish get really turned on and excited and they're kind of eating indiscriminately and not being real selective on the surface, uh, if you have a hard time seeing a uh, darker mayfly, uh, just put on something that's high vis. Put on uh, a Royal Wolf parachute where you can see that nice big white post. Put on a Mr. Rapidan, which has got, you know, yellow, big yellow wings. Something that you can see really well. We've got hot flies in here too. We have what we call indicator flies. Um, you know, caddis with uh, orange antron tied in the back. All right, uh, if you can't see it, you're not fishing it right. Not only do you not see your strikes, but uh, you're probably getting drag and you're probably hitting the water hard. And um, so fish fish the fly that you love to fish. That's the best part of this report is you kind of you kind of can't go wrong. And if you love fishing, um, if you have a hard time seeing size 16s, just go bigger, all right? They're gonna eat it. Um, we do have some uh, interesting weather, uh, April weather, typical April weather. It was at uh, 28 degrees this morning down here in the valley floor. Uh, we have another freeze warning tonight. Uh, remember, for those of you who don't live nearby, folks that come up from Tidewater and other places, our last frost here in the Shando Valley is uh, somewhere around the 10th of May. So that's, that's usually when folks will start planting their summer, summer vegetable gardens, 10th of May, 15th of May. If you go up in the Alleghenies or go into West Virginia, it's gonna be even later than that. So it's not unusual to be below freezing um, for almost another month for some of the higher mountain spots, all right? So you're gonna run into that. You're gonna run in some cooler mornings. Uh, that, can, that can knock the fishing back for a little bit, but for the most part now, our water temps are right where they need to be and our fish are active for really good chunks of, of the day. So uh, if you're up in the mountains fishing, it's dry fly time. Uh, if you have to switch to a nymph, I'm sorry, you had a tougher day. Uh, or maybe you've got some deeper pools you want to kind of be thorough and get down and fish. But um, it's time to be on top. All right, coming down the mountainside, delayed harvest are fishing really well. Um, getting good reports off places like North River delayed harvest. Uh, everybody's really enjoying those fish. Some of them are getting their last stockings of the year. Uh, some got some just in the last week. Um, get out and enjoy those. You have a little over a month left before they open up for harvest. Um, Typically bigger water, so a little bit bigger flies. Uh, fishing some heavier flies, like mop flies and things like that through those DHs is usually pretty deadly, all right? Uh, the spring creeks are fishing really well. Um, our first major hatch is the sulfurs. I think I mentioned last week, we were starting to see a few here or there. That's turned into a lot more than a few. Um, numbers are pretty good, depending on the night you're out there. Remember that the spinner falls are really what we're focused on. Uh, the hatches can happen throughout the day, one over here, one over there, all right? Um, so that can get the fish looking up, but there's no rhythm to the rises usually because uh, the, the bugs aren't there in enough numbers. Um, the last 45, 50 minutes of daylight, particularly over riffles, because that's where those bugs are programmed to go. They're programmed to look for nervous, broken water. Um, they know that that allows their eggs to be fertilized and distributed better. So that's kind of where they go. On a creek like Mossy, which doesn't have a lot of riffles, um, you need to make sure you're in the right spot. Okay, you keep, there's hundreds of yards of water which may not have a lot of bug activity, and then boom, you find that next little riffle with a wave train and a nice glide below it, and that's where the fish are gonna be stacked up and eating like crazy. So 
Um, so far, so sulfur parachutes, I love. The parachute can be the emerger, the dun, or the spinner. So it kind of works for all three. It's kind of nice, easier to see parachutes for me. And uh, even though sulfurs are pretty big, like size 14 and yellow, that fly gets pretty hard to see at dusk when you're sitting there squinting, trying to see it last light. Um, rusty spinners are a really important fly to have. Most mayflies turn brown before they die, wings go out the side. So having a good collection of crystal wing rusty spinners, really important, especially on the more technical uh, Spring Creek water that we have on the valley floor. The fish get a little bit more uh, selective as these uh, cycles go on. Um, big, big wind nights where there's a lot of wind blowing, uh, thunderstorms coming through, that can foul you up, all right? Those little bugs, you know, they collect in those mating swarms over the over the stream. Uh, they're pretty fragile and, you know, a good 15, 20 mile an hour gust and those bugs are getting blown right away, never hit the water. So you gotta kind of pick your night because um, it is April, we're, we're gonna have windy nights, we're gonna have stormy stormy evenings. Um, so if you, if you have calm and you have some overcast, if you have overcast, really heavy overcast, those spinners will come to the water even earlier. Remember, it's the sun that they're hiding from, it's desiccation. That's why they choose the low light. They, they don't have a mouth, they can't drink water, they can't hydrate. And so low light with cloud cover can bring greater numbers out and they can bring them out earlier. They can hit the water earlier. All right. So get out there, enjoy those sulfur spinner falls. They are, for me, one of the most enjoyable times of the year to fish on the spring creeks. And it's the beginning of what's going to be an awesome and prolonged uh, dry fly season on our spring creeks. They're going to eat on the top, you know, all the way till November after this. So kind of kicks it off well. For bass, we are in um, the, the, uh, the days where it can get a little bit confusing on exactly what they're doing. Um, our smallmouth bass, particularly here on the Shenandoah, can spawn anytime starting right now, which would be considered pretty early, all the way until almost June. And it's a moving target, and it's a moving target based on water flows, and it's really a moving target based on temperatures, because certain temperatures where these bass will want to drop their, their eggs, and the males will be right there to fertilize them and then guard the nest. Um, that can all get thrown out of whack by a high water event. Um, some of these fish will hold their eggs, some of these fish will drop some and then they'll they'll push off and shelter and then they'll they'll try and go through spawn uh, after the water levels come back down. But every year it's kind of a moving target. Um, my brother and I and all of our guides are out there on the water looking, physically looking, and the water is uh, at a manageable level right now. It's clear, you can see what's going on. We're looking for swept nests. Just because a bass is sweeping doesn't mean he's, he's um, actively spawning. In fact, these males will get out early and start making their making their nests, so to speak, uh, cleaning up spots for potential spawning areas, and then they can get covered back up by by detritus and silt, and then and then they'll come back in another week or two and clean out again. So you'll see these habits. A lot of people ask us a ton of questions about spawn, which is which is why I'm going to spend a little bit of time on it on the next couple reports because it's important to know about it because you can catch and find some of the biggest fish. In the entire river system but it's also important to be ethical and know when they're spawning and when they're paired up and when they're guarding and to, and to leave those fish alone so we're kind of working both sides of this to figure it out so uh water levels are really good on the, on the shenandoah and on parts of the james are quite good manageable uh spin fishermen do quite well this time of year because the water's up but the water levels are, are good for fly fishing right now as well uh, not having to put on big heavy sink tip lines not having to mend a thousand times because these fish are going to be down on the bottom and um, if you know the right water to find them and you can catch the biggest bass of the year they come off the winter hungry because they haven't eaten properly for months and they're about to burn a ton of calories and they know that and so they're going to be eating like crazy in those very confined areas the frustrating part is you could be floating the river for miles and fishing good looking structure and trees and wondering why they're not getting eaten and they're simply not there so um more on that over the next week or two, uh, but just know that we've actually found some fish already in staging areas. We found some fish sweeping already. Um, some of that's just them going through the motions uh, before the real thing happens. All right, so we'll keep you up to date. Uh, muskie are all spawning right now. Uh, we're we're going to stay off them until the beginning of May, uh, and they'll just simply start to show up. Um, they'll be back in their haunts, and they'll be all scratched and scarred up and, and really mad and hangry. So uh, we'll, we'll be looking for that in the next report or two. 
Um, so beautiful week ahead. Uh, not a whole lot. There's some windy weather, some colder nights. Okay, so we're running the the roller coaster a little bit on the on the um, cold fronts, but it doesn't look like there's any massive rain events. It's going to wash anything out, and it's just going to warm up by the weekend. This weekend should be just like perfect, perfect, warm air, southwest flow, um, some cloudy days, and the end of April. Hard to beat. So. Uh, I've had a lot of traffic to this shop. Thanks everybody who came out. We had a huge crowd here on Saturday for our anniversary in our open house. Love seeing everybody from near and far for all these years. Um, hopefully everybody had some good barbecue, learned a few things. We really enjoyed seeing you all. Uh, come by the shop. We have people coming in every day looking for new water to fish, looking for up-to-date conditions. We'll see you guys soon and I'll see you here back next Monday.